Through God's ear, there's nothing small about your business, your passion, your hours, your reputation. It's all huge. Your partnerships, even bigger. With Dell Small Business Technology Advisors, you'll get the tech, advice, and one-on-one partnership to help your business grow. Because with reliable Dell PCs with Intel Core processors, you can focus on what matters most, getting business done. Call 877-BY-DELL to speak with an advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. We'll get to Stugats' enthusiasm about Tiger Woods in a moment. We'll get to Josh Hader in a moment. We'll get to Travis Miner in a moment. We will. But first, uh, Jimmy Grope below. Uh, Tip drills. Weiner, Diner, 49er. No, what? Come on! Come on! <laughs> Giving the D all it can handle? Oh, for the love of God. So Stugatz is all excited about uh, Tiger Woods here. Finishes six yesterday. Man, that would have been great if he could have done something. Did he drag the ratings up because he was in it in the w- at the weekend and was leading by the eleventh hole, or did he need uh, did he need to carry it a little further to get the ratings back to where Tiger gets the rating? I haven't seen it yet. I'm certain Open Championship ratings were way up both on Saturday and Sunday. He had a great round on Saturday. He really did. That was so enjoyable to watch. And Sunday, he had a lead and was in it far enough into the day where I think people were really glued to their televisions. Plus, you had Jordan Spieth involved. You had some other guys involved that people are attracted to. So my guess is. The Open Championship is up big from last year. But I'll check it right now. But help me understand something, because we were talking about, uh, in the local hour, we were talking about there is only one way for, and Kevin Durant has taken a different path, there is only one way for someone to rival rival LeBron in terms of American sports superstardom. LeBron has arrived in that place. You remember we've talked about Kid Rock's hierarchy of fame? The way that the hierarchy of fame works, it's like television stars at the bottom, a movie star is a little bit higher, rock star a little bit higher than that, or sports star somewhere in there, rock star higher than that, or at the time. And then at the very top of the pyramid was LeBron or Michael Jordan. And LeBron is that now in every way and is about to become more that when he's in Los Angeles. But the only way I can see for anyone in American sports to rival That particular king's throne is for Tiger Woods to take the similar path of popular, unpopular, popular again, popular in, uh, you know, superhuman, human, superhuman, more superhuman than you've ever been. If Tiger Woods in his 40s can drag people back to the television set with something we don't see anymore, but is one of the coolest things in sports. Did you call your friends yesterday to tell them? Did you, did you text your friends? Did you get, hey, ty- pay attention, pay attention, here comes Tiger. There are very few things in sports doing that. He didn't quite do it yesterday, though. No. He didn't get us there. If he'd gotten to 14, then you would have had, you would have seen one of those spikes where everybody starts finding their televisions. I don't think we got there quite, quite there yesterday. But if he could start winning in his 40s, winning majors in his 40s, this is the way that he does it, struggling as a human, fighting mortality, doing it when we all know he's not quite physically what he used to be. Yeah, it's uh, you still had that moment, though, yesterday, Dan, when he has the lead standing on the 11th tee, um, you know, with eight holes to go. You had a bunch of people, like I got a million texts, people, te- uh, Tiger, Tiger, he's back, he's back, Tiger, everyone, people that I don't normally get Just Tiger, from. just the word Tiger. Yes, just Tiger. That's like my brother just sent me Tiger. My dad responded Tiger. I responded Tiger. That was the entire group conversation. That sounds like a, yeah. a, how a, a family of apes would speak, and it sounds like how your family would communicate about these things. <laughs> but his family, uh, she got his family, mostly surrounded by golf fans there. But I'm not a golf fan, really. And I was getting texts from people that aren't golf fans in the fantasy football chat. It's oh, man, cool, here man. comes Tiger. Sports are better when he's good, man, because because I, how tired are people of the LeBron coverage? They're tired that we don't have anything else to talk about. We've spent the summer on Highly Questionable asking stupid LeBron questions when 
Like we're we're starved for someone new to come challenge that throne, and we'll even take someone old. It doesn't have to be someone new. We'll make them new if if Tiger can get back up there. I have first take on here in the studio, and they lead with the defacing of LeBron murals in Los Angeles. <laughs> we're just making up LeBron content, where sports media coverage is largely a LeBron infomercial. What do you make of that, by the way? The Kobe Zealots are odd. The Kobe Zealots. He may live to regret this decision. He's never going to top Kobe. Well, let's explore for a second what it is that the Lakers are doing because it is worth exploring. Like, who else can they get where you're like, are they sleeping with us? <laughs> like, I'm, I, who are they? They got them no, all. No, I, I know, mean. but I mean, unless they bring Metal World Peace out of retirement, are they bleeping with us? Really? Michael Beasley? Like, we, Michael Beasley, who is the NBA player, not named Hassan Whiteside, most likely to be watching SpongeBob cartoons in the locker room. Michael Beasley has been a bit of a professional mess since he arrived in the league. Who else can the Lakers add where you're like, are they actively trying to play defense against LeBron James from inside the organization? Because it's Lance Stevenson, it's JaVale McGee, it's Rajon Rondo, and now it's this. How about Gilbert Arenas? <laughs> Out of retirement. I mean, Agent Zero. I mean, Stephon Marbury. <laughs> like, what is it? Is it because LeBron has to search in the discount bin to find anything so he'll take the crazy? Like, he can't, the, the Lakers can't get anybody else. All the other teams have been formed. He's been checkmated by Kevin Durant. Is there no one else available other than the crazy people in the discount bin? Is that what's happening here? Like in terms of real talent that you can find, that the only reason it can be real talent is if it's this. You don't have access to any of the other real talent, so you can't no. take. You have access to guys that were supposed to be real talent. <laughs> well, but I mean, this, yes, that's right. It's a potpourri of crazy. They're surrounding LeBron James with a potpourri of crazy and just saying, ah, he'll be sane enough for all of them. He'll fix it. <laughs> Michael Beasley can't stay in a city for more than a season. If you go back to the, like, uh, all right, he was in Minnesota for two years after two years in Miami. So in 2012, he goes to Phoenix. Then he goes to Miami. Then he goes to China. Then he goes back to Miami. Then he goes to Houston. Then he goes to Milwaukee. Then he goes to New York. Now he's with the Los Angeles Lakers. He can't stay in a place for more than a season. Was Melo never in play there? Because if you're going to collect all of these people, wouldn't the Lakers be one of the places that Mello would consider outside of Houston and Miami? And what special place in hell have you arrived in when the Atlanta Hawks don't want you and furthermore trade Dennis Schrader just so that they can be done with you? <laughs> like they're trading an asset just so they can have you on their roster and immediately purge you from their roster. That's where Mello's career is right now. The Atlanta Hawks, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like they traded for him and no one thought for a second he would be there right i got the move Polinka trades for jr smith oh <laughs> oh wow that'd be great wow <laughs> i mean honestly they are trying to lead the league and guys most likely to forget the score in the finals but i think jr would be the fifth craziest guy on that team would he be i don't think i don't think JR. Lance stevenson listen man look i could put him in an actual asylum, and he wouldn't rank. He would he would not have a lot of people ahead of him. J.R. Smith would not have a lot of people ahead of him. The, the offseason that they've had, you, you point to Rondo as like, okay, that's a stabilizing force? Rondo? <laughs> the wise veteran. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what went. Okay. They got the championship DNA from JaVale McGee. Guillermo, put it on. The, that's right. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Hell, the Lakers do it. Yes or no? Because Beasley sort of Beasley. <laughs> when you heard it, your your reaction was the same, right? Really, Beasley was available. Beasley, how many are they just going to stack crazy on top of each other in the in the locker room? I was also thinking with the right minutes on that team, Beasley can get you twenty five a game. Well, clearly that's what everyone's <laughs> thinking. Beasley he could get you 25 a game anywhere on the on the planet. He's not going to do it efficiently and with great shots. He's but he'll bury you 18 feet at a time. 25 what points? If you give him all the, with the proper it, minutes no, and the proper shots, well, well, he was the next best player last year. Oh, he was on fire for like a month. He'll get you your 25. You will not do any winning. 
<laughs> you will need this is this is the greatest challenge. <laughs> this is the greatest challenge of LeBron James's life. Can you make Michael Beasley a winner? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Palinka. I need to do that thing where I change the math again. When I went to Cleveland, it was not about chasing Jordan's rings. It was just about winning one. And I bought myself four years over there by just getting the one. How do I change the math here? By I, getting a few guys that can't actually do math, maybe? I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Beasley had a stretch of 27, 22, 32, 22. I mean, he didn't have a game within that, you know, little flash there in which he didn't take fewer than 27 shots, but right. I still he had the points, uh, man. Okay. Uh, how about the W's and L's? I mean, they win a game. <laughs> Not one of them. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying a home for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress for a lot of people. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, your assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. That gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. This is very cool here. First, they'll lock your rate up for 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rates stay the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. Either way, you win. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, simple. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. Rate shield approval, only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. I would like to help out the board op on Golic and Wingo. Cliff. I am your voice. I was you once. I am you. Golik and Wingo laughed at Cliff the board op. And Cliff, I'm telling you, they all laughed at me at one point. They're still laughing. Can we talk to Cliff right now? I want to ask him who in sports looks like they might have dandruff. Can we talk to Cliff right now since you've decided to use this first segment to send shout outs to Cliff the board op? Stugatz. Guys, it appears that we have Cliff the board op. Oh, yeah. All right. Cliff the board op. The question is posed to you. Mike, get our top of the line entertainment production ready. Who in sports most looks like they probably have dandruff? Is that to me? Thank you, Cliff. Your big shining moment. You are indeed the Stugats of the board op world. Hey, goodbye, everybody. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Stugats' weekend observations are very popular, and they will be in about 12 minutes. 12 minutes from now, Stugats will give you a torrent, an avalanche, a tsunami of his thoughts from the weekend, and uh, they will be scattered and wonderful, and you will laugh, and you will slap your face, and you will be delighted. <laughs> uh, Josh Gordon is in the news again, Mike. What is uh, This was very strange. Uh, Josh Gordon uh, is about as unreliable as an athlete as anyone has ever relied on. And Josh Gordon is an immense talent. There are very few in the history of the league talents good enough to lead the league in receiving with Brandon Whedon as the quarterback and as the only threat. His talent is Odell Beckham. Mian. He is as good at catching footballs and getting open as anyone ever has been, really. But he can't be counted on. And now, what is the latest with Josh Gordon, Mike? Uh, Josh Gordon just announced, um, he made a statement, I will not be in Cleveland for the start of training camp. Uh, rest assured, this, is, uh, this too is part of my overall health and treatment plan. He doesn't get into detail about that. I appreciate your awesome support and, uh, and the, the support that I've received from fans, teammates, friends, and the Browns organization. Just like you, I'm excited for the start of the season. I have every intention of being ready and available to join my teammates soon to help bringing winning football to our fans with the help of the NFL and NFLPA and the Browns organization. I've been able to utilize my resources uh, that have been made available to me that will ensure my well-being on and off the field. Now, this is interesting for a number of reasons, because I'm assuming that all of us, without it being explicitly stated there, are saying to themselves, okay, this has something to do with rehab. This has something to do with drugs. This has something to do with mental health maintenance. 
logical place for everyone to get. I, it I don't know that it the the message is so odd, right? Who? When have you ever read or heard that before training camp where a guy is saying, "Look, I'm not going to participate. Everyone agrees that I need to get my mental health." Right. Now, maybe psychiatrists and psychologists have figured out that Josh Gordon, along the treatment plan, needs to avoid some of the stresses right. that come with training camp. And, but, to be, and to be fair to everybody involved, we're assuming mental health and we're assuming all the other stuff. His statement was overall health and treatment. You understand, though, the guy's past uh, makes this. Look, you don't have a lot of precedence for a guy telling football, hey, need to get my mental health right can't go to practice right you don't have a lot of history of guys that have usurped the blueprint a number of times in cleveland and yet continue to be relied on in cleveland they're building around him they get jarvis landry because he's not going to be a number one there he's to be a number two next to josh gordon they are still counting on that dude even though they've lost they've won one game in the last two years and what i ask you with this because josh gordon i root for him and and you've heard me a number of times here to, to talk about the demons of addiction, mm -hmm. the demons of of how drugs can ruin people and lives. And Josh Gordon is at this point in his life because he's an addict and because he has been such a public addict, he is a really good liar, really good at it. Yep. And so you and and that's the na it's the nature of it, right? You're it's always, the nature of addiction. You're, you're yes. always hiding it, and and the, the the better you are at hiding it, the better you are at lying. Generally, for some context as to why Dan might believe that, we had Josh Gordon on our show, charming as hell, charming, possibly charming, convinced us that he was a, a change man. And about an hour later, the yeah. story broke that he was done for the season. But, he, but it's happened like four or five times already. You you know who was great at this, and he'll tell you so. Man, Ryan Leaf was good at it. Ryan Leaf will sit in front of you and he'll tell you the story and you'll think it's honest and vulnerable and all it is is a bunch of disguises for lies. Look you straight in the eye. Right. And just do it very well. Do it very well. It's the, na it's the nature of addiction. I just don't, I don't have a lot of preface precedent for a guy this talented that you have to keep relying on him, but you can't. And so this might just be, all this might be is, Hey, I just need some maintenance, need some mental maintenance, but man, that's a fragile thing to put on your foundation when you're trying to win football games. It might be part of an overall long-term plan. You're right for Josh Gordon. We have no idea. Right. But when a guy, that's like, what he's saying. That's I'm not he... certain there's anyone in sports that when he says "rest assured," where you become you can't be assured. You're not resting. You can't rest or be no. assured. No. You can you you cannot rest or be assured around Josh Gordon's promises. <laughs> This is such a massive year for Josh Gordon. He needs to do really well this season. He's not made a lot of money in his career. This is his last opportunity, considering his window, to get a big contract. So he needs to make sure he's 100% right. Man, you got to be careful giving that a big contract. A guy... I, I, oh. What if he plays 16 this year? Gives you 117 oh, catches. Oh, oh. Gives you 1,600 ah. yards. Oh. And he gives you oh. 18 touchdowns. Oh. Just be careful. Be careful giving all of that a big contract. <laughs> he led the league in, in receiving with Brandon Whedon throwing him the football as the only option the Browns had as a talent in their huddle. In 14 games. No, that's true. <laughs> that's right. That too. An amazing deal. The Browns are playing Jarvis Landry and Josh Gordon, $13 million. <laughs> About just 8,000 of it's going, 800,000 of it's going to Josh Gordon. He's but lost it all in fines. Whatever, whatever money Josh Gordon has made, he's lost in attorney's fees. Don Lebatard. But I don't know what you do with the public comments because last time we heard from Hassan Whiteside, he's questioning the way he's used and then 10, 10 days later, he's saying publicly, I believe in all of Spoh's decisions. I believe in him. Nothing Hassan says means anything. It's it's cartoon words. Stugats. You seem really broken up about this, man. It does seem yeah, like yeah. you're holding back tears. Yeah. yeah. You want a napkin? What's, What's going on? Because yeah. of the way I'm speaking? Yeah. 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 It sounds like I'm I'm emotional about this. It does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. That does. Barry Jackson report hit you hard, <laughs> man. I mean. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Lebatar Show is brought to you by Penn's Oil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil 
oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have traded Johnny Manziel to the Montreal Alouettes in a five player deal that will see him reunited with former Texas A&M coach Mike Sherman. The Mets have placed Noah Syndergaard on the 10 day disabled list after contracting hand, foot, and mouth disease. The hell is that? It was something they're speculating. They're saying that it was something related to a kid's. It's only something kids could contract. But Syndergaard was around a bunch of kids doing a baseball event for little leaguers, and they say that somehow he contracted it. Only the Mets can do that. Lose their ace to charity work. <laughs> Disaster. And finally, disappointing news for Avenged Sevenfold fans. As the band has been forced to cancel its entire summer North American tour. That is too bad. Is that the reason he's not on to talk Tiger today? Well, listen, no. Unfortunately, singer and friend of the show, M. Shadows, is battling a serious blood blister that formed on his vocal cords and is under doctor's orders not to perform. His doctors feel that three months of no singing and voice rest should get his cords back on track. Let's get him on the show to talk open. (laughs) Hey, sports fans, the sun is shining. The temps are rising. Summer is officially here, so grab your friends, blast some tunes, and ignite those coals because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford Charcoal, start something. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Stugatz's this weekend observations are coming up here, but a texture writes in uh, regarding Josh Gordon. Stop fishing, Dan. Josh Gordon said his overall health. I love to think of the Browns meetings over the last four years involving Josh Gordon, which is just Hugh Jackson screaming, we need him. We're going to trust him. Should we trust him? And other people shouting back at him, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, yes. <laughs> and he's still there with the Browns because they they're, cause they know he's going to have 3,000 yards in a season if he goes somewhere else. You know what's interesting is it's not just Hugh Jackson. It's been like three different Browns regimes. And this happened with Ricky Williams. There were all these different regimes down he's an here in Miami. intoxicating talent. And he was just always there. Not always, but he ru- you know what no, I mean. but he ruined he ruins the regime and he's still there and he's only he's the only thing left standing from the regime. It feels like Belichick is just waiting. Well like yeah. he reads rest assured and a big smile <laughs> That's comes. Right. He's the only one resting assured that uh Josh Gordon is gonna end up on his team. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do Stugatz's weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boys, too. Weekend observations brought to you by Vivid Seats. When's the last time you were at the game or concert? Go to vividseats.com slash ESPN today for your exclusive discount offer. Vivid Seats, the official ticket partner of ESPN. Dan, golf was so close to being back and black. To the guy in my community who called the pro shop to report my golf cart was parked too close to the green. Do me a favor. Get a life. When you look up the definition of no life in Webster's, it says a person peeking out their window to see where people are parking their golf carts and reporting the people who parked too close to the green. And until you come out of your house and tell me yourself... I'm going to continue to park there. In fact, I might start parking right on the green. Tiger Woods was seven inches away from shooting a 60 on Saturday. Golf. It feels like Jordan Spieth has been around for 30 years. Ricky Fowler, do it in a major. Tiger, for now, I'm just looking for moments. This past weekend, you gave me several. Thank you. But also, be careful. People... We'll start expecting things. Vegas has Tiger Woods as a 16-1 to favorite to win the PGA Championship. Tiger Woods, Grand Slam, 2019, collision course. Mets manager, Mickey Calloway, gets paid a lot of money to know what's going on with his team. I get paid nothing to do the same. Mickey Calloway said he was unaware 
of Joanna Cespedes' comments that he might need surgery on both heels that would sideline him for 8 to 10 months. Yet somehow, I was well aware. I hate them. Please. <laughs> I do. I can't stand this to you. It's just, it's enough. Syndergaard's got Harvey's betrayed. And the whole thing's a mess. Matt's, we thought he'd be great. He's not very good. Wheeler, wheels down. Enough. Please let the Lakers starting five be LeBron, Rondo, Stevenson, Beasley, and McGee. LeBron surrounding himself with guys that'll make it seem like getting to the second round of the playoffs is like winning another NBA title. Had he play? Has anyone had more moral victories in the history of sports than LeBron James? Steven Strasburg, be careful. Max Scherzer can kill you with his eyes. Headline. He can't? Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Can Max Scherzer kill you with his eyes? <laughs> Headline. Brashard Perryman knows he's in a make-or-break year. July. Luke Walton, two therapy sessions per day. Collision course. Saquon Barkley signed his contract with his thigh. Johnny Manziel getting arrested on St. Catherine Street. Collision course. Rory, par putt, 17, massive, camera, on Francesco Molinari. Dan Hicks says, Francesco Molinari just doesn't blink. Molinari proceeds to blink four times. To the gentleman who stole a car from one date and used that car to take someone else out on another date. Sir, the Stugats is strong in you. Kevin Chapel, I'm begging you. Never wear that hat again. Francesco Molinari. Looks like he spent the entire round using a vape pen. Jordan Spieth. Let one get away. Tiger Woods. Doing a commercial for Taylor Made, Talking about his clubs. Helping him manage misses. While at the same time, missing a shot pretty badly on the 17th hole of the final round of the Open Championship. Everyone involved, the Stugats, is strong in you. Pat Perez, or PP as I like to call him, really trickled down the leaderboard. <laughs> Old Tiger, with a one-shot lead on the 11th hole of the major, in a final round, puts his foot on the gas. When he starts doing that, he's back. Looks like PP couldn't rise to the occasion. Tiger Woods, congratulations. You really look like you're at peace. Wonder if he spent time with a llama. Aaron, I'm telling you, man, be careful. Looks like PP had some stage fright. I'm not certain any athlete in the history of sports has given us more to talk about than Tiger Woods. Matt Harvey, eight runs on eight hits. Fake ace. To the gentleman. We did that already. If you want to know why. The guy who, who complained about your golf course parking? No, it was the guy who stole the car from one date to use on another date. I put that in there twice. If you want to know why Kevin Chappell didn't win the Open, Google his hat. PP has some serious leaks in his game. Kevin Kisner, knock it off with the sunglasses behind the hat routine. Francesco Molinari, looks like he spends the entire round using a vape pen. I think we did that. PP. Just can't drain any putts. Oh, Headline, God. Jordan Spieth, upbeat after the Open Championship. Of course he is. He's 24 years old and has the world by the golf balls. Poor Molinari. No one cares. PP, urinated oh, all God. over himself. I don't care who wins the World Series this year. The Houston Astros are the best team in baseball. In fact, there should be a committee that votes for the best team in baseball after the season. Must watch TV. Baseball, you are welcome. Jordan Spieth could easily have three more majors and easily have two less. Golf, final round, open championship, heaven, a place Art Bryles will never know about because he lives in hell. Dan... Those. I mean, what is that? Well, that's where he is. Dan, those are the weekend observations. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the poll. My money. Does Art Bryles live in hell? Put it on the poll. Does anything other than urine get described as trickling down? <laughs> 
To give batters a different look, pitchers throw a changeup. Your idea of a different look is sunglasses. That's true. But La Quinta Inns and Suites is really taking the different look thing to a new level. Definitely a major league makeover, starting with a bolder, brighter lobby full of comfortable spaces to let you settle in. Or chill out in front of a big, flat screen like Wingo would. Oh, you know it. It's a changing La Quinta look to help you get in the zone and look sharp when you hit that big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. Don Lebatard. The one John Fogarty song. Do you call it center field or put me in coach? When he died, this is the only song I knew that he did. I was sad. I was like, I'll never see him sing it live. Stugatz. John Fogarty was just on the show. I don't think he died. Billy just, like, killed him. He's alive. That's just, a fine. He was just minute. on the show two weeks ago. Wait a minute. He was on whose show two this weeks ago? This show with Greg Cody. <laughs> it is not- <laughs> I'm not- telling you, this is a Hispanic song. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it, Guillermo? I have a direct and pointed question for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why did you kill John Fogarty? This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Texter writes in: This is how ridiculous Tiger Mania has become. You don't even mention the guy who actually won. Pathetic. Is <laughs> that guy? <laughs> I mentioned him a thousand times. I mean, and I still don't know his name. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Stugatz mentioned it like ten times, and I still don't know. Molinari. Um, Tiger, if you're going to break out the red shirt, you're going to be leading after 11. Like you got to get some shame for that. We don't get just all applause for Tiger Woods today for making it close to back when his life has never been about almost. We can sit there and dissect the idea that somebody yelled, during his backswing. I imagine that infuriated you, right? Uh, it did. I didn't like it. But as Johnny Miller said, uh, if Tiger was given a redo, he would not have taken it. Like, he crushed the drive. <laughs> he hit it real. Now, he was upset and had every right to be upset because that could have went really badly for Tiger. But he did happen to crush that drive. He did. But if you're going to be Tiger Woods on Sunday and wear the red and, you know, we f- we, fi- we follow his every movement. Right. Uh, you can't fold up after 11 holes, can you? Like, you're winning a major, and he's one of the great front runners of all time. If he leads you on the last day, you will lose. Yes. Um, I mean, listen, he started behind, right? Like, the story is going to be about Tiger Woods and, you know, the ratings, which were, which were up a lot from, from last year. Um, and that shouldn't surprise anyone. It's going to be a lot about Tiger Woods. And I guess the story should be about Tiger Woods. We waited for that moment for a long time. The story really was the best golfer in the world right now, Jordan Spieth. He blew it. That was Jordan well, Spieth's tournament no, to win. No, 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 Dan. No, that's not the story. That's, he blew it. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not I'm not disputing the accuracy of your statement. I'm saying that's the golf story of the day. Right. Those ratings have nothing to do with golf. Those ratings have to do with a phenomenon. Those ratings have to do with hope. Those ratings have to do with Tiger Woods. Even in a world where Serena Williams and Roger Federer exist, Tiger Woods is the only reason we talk about that sport, period. Like, the winner of yesterday's Open doesn't matter to anyone except the golf zealots. Right. It earned a 5.0 overnight rating. It ties for the highest-rated final overnight at the Open since Tiger Woods completed the career Grand Slam. No one else in that sport matters. No one else in that sport matters. Now, Jordan Spieth, to your point, won it last year, and Spieth didn't win it. Tiger didn't win it, but Tiger was merely in contention, and it was up 38% from last year. There is no story. There. How about this, Dugat? There is no golfer. I can have the pool of golfers available to me. There is no golfer who can win any tournament that will be better for golf than the whiff of Tiger around the final round. Never mind winning. There is no golfer doing anything in that sport that matters the way it matters. Tiger's in contention. Last day, call your friends. Meaning him just being a contention will trump anything, anything, anyone winning any tournament. Any story in the sport. Like, he he is so far ahead of mattering. I know you care about golf. I know you love your Mickelsons. You can take any one of those old-timers. You could take Tom Kite and have him win a tournament. It ain't going to feel anything like (laughs) simply yesterday (laughs) felt where you feel the buzz, and all of a sudden, anybody who cares about sport... And many people who just care about fame are like, let me get to my television. Is he getting close? What's happening here? Right. Call your friends. No one else can do that. Everyone else is just a golfer. Um, yeah, I think you're right. In fact, you are right.
That's it. I was thinking maybe Phil winning, you know, at Augusta at the age of 49 or 50. Tiger, maybe. Tiger Woods makes sports more interesting that way because he puts in play a conversation about a sport that the mainstream isn't always talking about or right. ever talking about. Uh, the, the majors are something that feel good to suburban dads who are sitting around on Sunday and need something to watch. But that's it. Tiger Woods is not that. Tiger Woods is calling your wife out from, from, from whatever it is that she's doing and saying, come out here, honey, you got to see this and calling your friends and telling them Tiger's closed. I didn't have to call my wife. She was out shopping, which she does every single Sunday. She came home. I said, what are you doing? She said, I want to watch Tiger. I didn't have to call her. That's funny. <laughs> that, what? <laughs> does she even like golf? How does that happen? <laughs> Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Don Lebertard. And Demolition Man is Drexler. You Absolutely you not. Lost not die Hard can be here. Jordan. Drexler. Look, it's not a... Paul Millsap. A couple more years, I mean... Uh, no, you know what? You know what? I you know what? In. No, I got career. it. Stugatz. I'll tell you what Demolition Man is. Demolition Man is Jamal McGlure. That's no! what I'm yes. yes. No! Yes! yes! No! Yes! no! no! Cross the line! Yeah. What? What? Get out. That's disrespectful. Unbelievable. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Commercial insurance through Progressive protects your business and your dream. Choose from over 30 coverage options at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The Giants and running back Saquon Barkley, they have agreed on a four-year, $31.2 million rookie contract. Browns' Josh Gordon says he will miss the start of training camp. And finally, cancellations for Tesla's Model 3 orders have picked up in recent weeks and refunds now outpace deposits, according to a Needham & Company analyst. Tesla refutes this. Of course they do. The analyst note cites extended wait times for the car, the expiration of a $7,500 tax credit, and the fact that Tesla has not made the $35,000 base model of the car available for purchase yet. About one in every four Model 3 orders is canceled, the analyst said. Double the rate from a year ago. Customers have to put down a refundable $1,000 deposit to reserve a Model 3, then pay another $2,500 to choose their specific version, they pay the rest when the car is delivered. The wait time for a Model 3 is about four months to a year, and base model customers could wait until 2020. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I'm Elon Musk. <laughs> Not my fault. <laughs> Didn't the New York Post have an article this weekend? Just the title was, the headline was, Elon Musk is a total fraud or something like that? That's it. Yep. Efficient. And you're welcome. Everyone's catching up. I mean, Maureen Callahan, great job. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to expose people because I am these. But Dan, I'm Elon Musk. Elon Musk, you are me. Okay? So I could see it from a mile away. What I'm going to start doing is just exposing the people. I don't want to do research. I'll let people like Maureen Callahan do the research for me. And so now everyone's coming to the Elon Musk party, and he looks like a complete phony. I love it. Just to clarify, it was an opinion piece. It was an actual yeah, it's a research great opinion. That was done. Yeah, yeah. It's a good job. That is how Stugatz consumes all of social media and the news. Who agrees with me? Yep. They are brilliant. Yep. I mean, everyone agrees on this one. Everyone. Shareholders, the whole place. Hey, sports fans. I mean, the stock is down. It's unbelievable. You really don't have much more information than other, he's a phony. other than that. Yeah. yeah. You don't. You, uh, terms, who needs more information uh, than that? I mean, it's it's guy pretty, talks a big game and has no game. It's I mean, pretty amazing that you're not even interested in the headline. Nope. Elon Musk Mons is a total fraud. Yeah. You didn't even read that article, which is specifically made for you. I know it would have information in it that would bolster your claims. I know. It, no, 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 no. She has my information in her article. Like I don't need to read it. I already wrote it. So, what are you talking about? I wrote it for her. Hey, like, God. Ah. He also just read an update with ammo and information he could use and just said, no, stocks are down. He didn't retain any of that. Must portion of the update. 
Stugatz is a bit of a hamster on a wheel just chasing words. You understand that, right? When he's reading the updates, he's not absorbing any of that. (laughs) You can put any Ron Burgundy information on there, as we've seen in the past with the cowboy hat made of bacon. We'll play that for you again. (laughs) You can put anything in front of Stugatz, and he will read it. He does not retain any of what it is that he's reading. Hey, sports fans, the sun is shining, the temps are rising, summer is officially here, so grab your friends, blast some tunes, and ignite those coals, because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford Charcoal, start something. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Go ahead and play it, Mike. The one time we tried to trick Stugatz, and it would have gone on forever if I hadn't broken character and burst out laughing. He would have continued to read this live read, which was written absurdly on purpose without ever understanding what he was reading. Follow the herd. Nearly 300 head of cattle into the heart of Miami. Admissions free. Don't miss the horse shows, arts and crafts, all the plants and flowers you can buy. A farmer's market, dog skill show, live bands, great food, and more. Like their cowboy hat made of bacon. Kids will love petting the cows, cougars, donkeys, mules, ducks, birds, rattlesnakes, and everyone's favorite, alligator wrestling for the kids. And the huge fun zone... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I wish I'd been able, Mike, I wish I'd been able to hold out and it had been one of those really long reads. When should I have known? Because I'm thinking a the cowboy, cowboy hat, hat made a bacon. Yeah, but I mean, because three, a dog skill show sounds yeah, great. Yeah, but 300 head of cattle, why are they going into Miami? That doesn't make any sense. It's oh, like yeah. saying 300 head of cattle going into New York City. Like, why? <laughs> Kids petting cougars. Oh, yeah. A little bit of a red flag. Oh, yeah. A yeah. bit of a red flag. And then rattlesnakes almost immediately following. Still didn't uh, catch Pet the, guy. the ra- rattlesnakes. And then, but he just read, he, he glazed right over alligator wrestling for the kids. Plausible. I mean. <laughs> How? In what world? <laughs> Only in a world where you read without retaining. <laughs> so, um, the Brewers pitcher, Josh Hader, this weekend, uh, I, I want to talk about this and I'm not going to serious you up on it. I'm not going to do, uh, you know, be woke or any of that stuff that makes people crazy around ESPN. I just think the conversation around these things in sports is so intergalactically stupid and has nothing to do with race relations in this country. It's just sports fans being dopey, sports fans embracing their own no matter what. And that's all it is. And searching through Josh Hader's Twitter account when he's 17 years old to find racist things or homophobic things or KKK references. First of all, that feels dirty to me. Going back into a teenager's past and doing that to his social media account when he becomes famous, that... That's uh, one thing that feels dirty to me here. I think a lot of people would respond and have responded, hey, he's not that far removed from being 17 years uh, old. Okay, he's, but he just turned 24. Okay, and that's fine, but I'm just not interested in the teenage rambling thoughts of people who are not yet professionals. When you're in play as professionals, you've heard me say this before, I don't want college kids covered this way as they learn to find their voice, but we cover them that way, even though the ones we should be covering this way are only the paid professionals because written into those contracts is a standard of being and so there's going to be some criticism with those things but we don't have to do that to amateurs so anyway this is not none of which is to excuse what josh Hader was doing at 17 but then for brewers fans as he comes out to a standing ovation cheering what i don't know other than the brewers but i would argue this and this is something you saw the president of the country elected on do not underestimate how much people hate the media because I'm guessing that those Brewers fans, it was more than just an allegiance to their pitcher. I'm guessing they're saying, what are you doing going into a 17 year old's past to go and grab this dirty stuff? I'm guessing that's part of the reaction. And if you've learned nothing in the last couple of years of politics, learn that, that people really hate the media in this country, hate it almost more than anything. And so what Josh Hader got as he's on that mound. Like, if, if you're a, a black person in this country, or if you're a gay person in this country, and you see Milwaukee Brewers fans give him a standing ovation for being nothing other than an idiot 17-year-old, how do you not look at that and be like, never mind, never mind. But whether- Dan, does he get that same ovation if he's not nearly as good, if that team's not no, nearly but, as good? But, he no, does but, it, no, right? but Stugatz, all this is, this is not a race conversation. This is not something that you can feel good about because you're just yelling at Brewers fans or yelling at Josh Hader or yelling at anybody. This is just a stupid sports conversation. It's stupid sports zealotry 
that just manifests itself in one person's applauding, now we're all applauding, and it doesn't mean anything. And it's certainly not relevant in any way to anything happening to this country, nor is it America. It's just dumb sports stuff. Like, it's not, because a lot of people are looking at it, and they're looking at it, and they're saying, look, this is America. No, it's not America. The outrage around this is not America. The extremes of this are not America. It's just dopey fans in Milwaukee being proud brewers, and and in a way that makes them look asinine. Well, it, right, but it's their feel-good, right? So Josh Hader and that team makes them feel good. They're telling Josh, hey, we've got your support. And you're right, I agree with you. It, you know, Cub fans, totally different scenario, but Cub fans had no issue. And I don't know if people had issues with Cub fans giving standing ovations to a role as Chapman. I'm just telling you, Stugatz, that these conversations get to sports and get dumber. Upon arrival, well, because they the, get to me, these yeah. conversations get to sports and they just become intergalactically stupid and have nothing to do with anything. That what happened at the Brewers game is just fandom. That's all it is. I think Dan has a point because John Rocker received a standing ovation, different time and not the same sort of circumstance. But that was a lot of sports rah rah idiocy too. The whole, the whole thing, man. Don't be proud of yourself because you're the people coming after Josh Hader and the Brewers. Don't be proud of yourself if you're sitting there celebrating Josh Hader and the Brewers. Like all of it is just bottom line, baseline, stupid. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying a home for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress for a lot of people. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, your assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. That gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. This is very cool here. First, they'll lock your rate up for 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rates stay the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. Either way, you win. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, simple. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. Rate shield approval. Only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLSConsumerAccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. They're talking sports, going at it as hard as they can. Stugatz. They're talking sandwiches, going at it as hard as they can. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. The Joe Flacco story is interesting in Baltimore where Lamar Jackson if you believe he's Deshaun Watson, if you believe that he can take that collegiate style that very few have been able to take to the pros, where it's it's Michael Vick, it's Cam Newton, Steve Young once upon a time, the, the list is very small of guys who can come and play the scrambling effortless, mm-hmm. drop back behind the line, scramble to the left, throw the ball easily 30 down, 30 yards downfield. You can do that in college when you're Deshaun Watson and Clemson. Usually the speed of football confines everyone so much that you can't play that way. But I, we all saw Deshaun Watson go to Seattle and play that way. Right. Got hurt. RG three did it for a year. Got hurt. Um, but Lamar Jackson, if you, the, the Joe Flacco, Situation is fascinating to me because Joe Flacco is just sort of this quarterback who's between average and above average, replaceable with 12 other guys in a league where only 10 of them are really good or five of them are really good. And somebody's got to play the quarterback position and he happens to have won a championship, (laughs) which is a big one, which guaranteed him that contract guaranteed overspending from his franchise. And now, though, Because of what the Ravens have been the last few years, because Flacco has been quietly bad, quietly bad, in the first round, they take exactly what should be the scariest thing for his cement-footed butt. (laughs) Quietly bad is a very, very good way to describe Flacco the last couple of years. It's hard to be quietly bad. (laughs) Who else in sports has been quietly bad? Usually you're, if you, if people at that position, you're not allowed to be quietly bad. At that position for a team that's been pretty good. They don't have many years like they've had here. 
he's an interesting test case for the, all the things you believe quarterbacks to be and just sort of being confused by, all right, is he good? I, that's a, that's that, been the story of his no, career. No, I know, but no, the joke story of his career has been, is he elite? That's not what we're doing anymore. Now it's just, is yeah, he is, good? Is it, no, it's, he's downgraded. That's the aging process on the sports argument. It once upon a time <laughs> was, is he elite when he won the championship? And then the last couple of years, oh, wait a minute, is he good? I was a Super Bowl MVP. I is mean. he above average? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because I'll tell you right now, if I'm a Raven fan, I'm a hell of a lot more excited about the hope of Lamar Jackson than I am about whatever Joe Flacco is going to bring me next year or the year after or the year after. Right or wrong? Oh, right. It would be really scary for Joe Flacco if he were capable of emotion. <laughs> now, he did that back in 2012. How many years does that buy him? I mean, is this it? Have we oh, arrived no, at the no, years? No. I'm going to say no, about six. It's too it hasn't bought <laughs> What do you mean? If, if we've gone in the conversation from is Joe Flacco elite to is he above average to is he good, is he quietly bad, that is a descent. It's a precipitous descent on the conversation around the quarterback. <laughs> and because answer the damn question. Is he good? I don't know. Yeah, we'll put it on the poll. Is he good? Don't even put Flacco up there by name. Just, is he good? But I feel like he's going to get another season here to try well, to show people that he could still o- be good. Only if Lamar Jackson isn't showing them anything in training camp. Because, they, man, you don't draft a quarterback in the first round unless you hope that he can do what Deshaun Watson did, which is just come in, we're going to drop him in, and we're going to give the entire city, our entire football epicenter, we're going to give it a caffeine jolt because we're going to actually have hope at that position instead of, you know, Cement Nike Joe Flacco running out of the pocket like a baby giraffe. <laughs> the Ravens have actually been in camp for about a week. They were the first team to report, and all the reports from camp are suggesting that even if Flacco has the job, and he's expected to have the job, there's going to be a lot of packages for Lamar Jackson. So a little timeshare, huh? It's exciting. It, it would be exciting if Joe Flacco were capable of emotion. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if we know whether Lamar Jackson is actually professionally good, because we don't. That I, but if you tell me this is the closest thing we've seen in the league since Michael Vick, I can't think of anything to put a quarterback less like that than Joe Flacco in every way. Because Joe Flacco, <laughs> oh, actually, Joe Flacco Tom should Savage. be endorsing cardboard. Savage, no, no, Savage to Sean no, was no, a very no, similar no, conversation. Listen I, uh, yeah. No, listen to me. Because Flacco has a name, but Flacco by himself, you say capable of human emotion. What are the things he should be endorsing? Cardboard. Baking soda. <laughs> he is Joe Flacco is not excited, and I, I'm going to go ahead and say it, not capable of excitement. But for him or others. Well, he's Joe Cool. He was Joe Cool when he was winning championships. Now he's Joe Bort. Championship. When he, won, when he won a championship. That's Lee Evans' fault. He didn't win a second, by the way. Can you imagine if how confused we'd be if he yeah. won two? Yeah, pray for us. Is yeah, what... he'd be Eli Manning. Oh, no, no. <laughs> he'd be Eli, you're right. People are saying, Mike, that he's Mark Bolger without a ring. That Joe Flacco is essentially Mark Bolger. Mark Bolger doesn't have a ring. That that he's Mark Bolger with a ring. That would make him Mark Bolger with a ring. Very good, Dan. <laughs> but are you going to blame me for the way you said that? No, because that would cost me money. It's an interesting conversation. What do you, if you're a Ra- there's not a Ravens fan who wants Joe Flacco to start the first game of the season. There's there? always a Ravens fan out there that wants Joe Flacco to start the Especially season. Trust in me. Baltimore. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Pray for us. <laughs> Pray for us. One of the, one of the great sentences ever uttered. That's the owner of the Baltimore Ravens. After it was learned that the Ravens were merely contemplating, we don't know if they were seriously contemplating or just contemplating, but they were contemplating the idea of adding controversial Colin Kaepernick to their huddle and their timeline. And Bashadi, I think we all discovered him at the same time, where it was like, oh, this guy's gangster with an A. Pray for us. That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE network. Again, this is, this is a man. If you look at him in a suit, he's polished and he looks, he looks like he can really, um, get things done. No matter what your needs are, this is a man who could take care of your needs. 
And just the idea of them thinking about bringing Colin Kaepernick made him uh, revert to the Lord. Pray for us. (laughs) You can't handle that with mere humans. You need the help of God on that one. Pray for us. Is he saying pray force like he wants to establish a pray force or pray for us? Pray force. Curtis Martin will be on there <laughs> on, the, on the task force. Pray force. I just love the idea of Ravens fans flocking as a congregation to the church to pray on this matter. Pray force. Don Libertard. Do you refer to the yellow sauce at a hibachi restaurant as yum yum sauce? Fifty-seven percent of the audience said no. Stugats. Do you go ginger, 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 yum, 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 or yum, 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 yum? Thirty-eight percent of the audience said yum, 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 yum. So they get three yum, yum sauces. They ditch the ginger, get two yum, yums with an additional yum, yum. Second place was ginger, yum, yum. That Chris said earlier, no one goes ginger, ginger. Eighteen percent of the audience goes ginger, ginger. And 18% of the audience also goes yum, 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 yum. about that? This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Scott Van Pelt could have joined us in a half hour noon Eastern on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Live. Here's your Sports Center update. Giants running back Saquon Barkley has signed a four-year, $31.2 million rookie contract. He signed the contract with his thigh. The Mets have traded Jurgis Familia to the Athletics for prospects and international spending cash. Man, what a mess. I mean, yeah, that's a, sense. that is a guy who has value and they didn't get anything for him because oh, no. oh, they because, got international spending. No, cash. well, the, the, the uh, it is unbelievable what Bernie Madoff did to the New York Mets. <laughs> like the Wilpons are now these discount hunters and they trade people for things like international money. They were in the World Series a few years back, right? I know, but the, the way they're managed, that's not a baseball trade, Stugatz. They, no. They, nope. It's saving money with a good player. And getting some money back, but you can only use it internationally. I mean, <laughs> I, I, basically, the Mets just traded for Bitcoin. <laughs> they don't. They, they just, just get us something that feels like currency. Keith Law was very strong uh, in an article that I saw about how this is a terrible look for Major League I just Baseball. don't understand it, man. That's a big market team that basically got ripped off by Madoff, and so now that can't behave like a like a big market team. They're they're sitting there trading for cash. Yep. And finally, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is being rebooted for television. No network or timeline for the series has been announced, but there's one other concrete detail. This time around, the role of Buffy, last played by Sarah Michelle Gellar, will be played by a black actress. Hey, sports fans, the sun is shining, the temps are rising. Summer is officially here, so grab your friends, blast some tunes, and ignite those coals, because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford Charcoal, start something. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Last word on this Josh Hader Brewers thing. He was given a standing ovation this weekend for basically doing anything, nothing other than seven years ago he had some tweets that were offensive when he was 17. But here's the proof that you need that at sporting events, people will behave differently than they will in real life. At Wrigley Field yesterday, some dude just stole a, a baseball from a a kid who was tossed a baseball by one of the players, and it's just not something that would ever happen anywhere except at a baseball game. No adult would behave that way anywhere but a baseball game. What are you laughing about, Guillermo? Well, this, this it, clown. It, I, I think there's more to the story here before you start calling him a clown. I'm perfectly fine with it. You calling him a clown with little information, zero facts, I'm fine with it. He's a clown. But I think there's more to the story here that might change your opinion. I got a lot of flack for this because last week or the week before, we were talking about foul balls, and I said the move that you do if you don't want to give a foul ball to the kid is you give it to your girlfriend, right? But that's a foul ball. This is a ball that was yeah. thrown specifically to that kid, which is a big difference than if a ball comes flying at you, you catch it, and you give it to a loved one. Big, big difference. 
David Kaplan tweeted out, I spoke with people from the Cubs. The man who grabbed the ball on the widely seen video had actually helped the little boy get a ball earlier. The young wow. man has a game use ball and the Javi Baez ball. Yeah. All is well. Guy is A-OK, so let it go, Doesn't people. Matter. Exactly. So he got this kid a ball. He gave him a ball earlier. Then another ball presented itself to this guy. He took it for himself. He was selfish for a minute. He gave a ball, got to get a Javi Baez autograph ball. I mean, the kid's the big winner here. I mean, get off this guy's back, Levitar. That's another thing. If that video wouldn't have come out, that kid would not have gotten a Javi Baez ball. So he helped the kid by giving the ball to his loved one. Yeah. By stealing the ball from a child. He, no, uh, listen, he, possession's he, nine-tenths of the law, did right? He, did he or did he not? Regardless, the, the larger point being, people do not behave that way. Adults don't behave that way until they get to the ballpark. I don't know, man. Foul, have you ever caught a foul ball? Have a foul ball come in your direction and then judge this man. That's what I'm going to tell you, Dan. What's a one-tenth of the law that isn't possession? That's a good question. This wasn't a foul ball either, as you mentioned before. That makes this different. If the kid just catches the ball that was tossed to him and never drops to the floor, the guy never gets it. What is the one-tenth? Let's look that up. If possession is nine-tenths of the law, what is the other? They put that on the poll, Guillermo. If if possession is nine tenths of the law, do you know what the other tenth is? Yes or no? Let's do funniest thing from the sports weekend. <laughs> hey people, tell us what in the sport made you laugh hard this this weekend. It is a segment we call "What Made You Laugh This Weekend." Ha ha ha! Let the kid work on his catching. How's that sound? I mean, the ball was lobbed right to him. He got a mitt. I mean, the guy was a foot away. I mean, work on your skills. Anyway, funniest thing for the sports weekend brought to you by the Capital One Quick Silver Card, earning unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. What's in your wallet? Carmelo Anthony, according to Mark Stein, ESPN has not yet confirmed this, but former ESPNer Mark Stein, who is uh, usually very credible about these things, says Carmelo Anthony intends to sign with the Houston Rockets. Chris, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? This weekend, the Tampa Bay Rays AA affiliate, the Montgomery Biscuits, had Millennial Night at the ballpark. It included avocado burgers, <laughs> selfie stations, a napping area, and participation ribbons. Ooh, I like naps. You like napping stations? I like, yeah. We should what? have a napping station here. You guys like napping naps stations? Naps are great. You don't nap? I'm not saying napping isn't fun. I'm saying napping stations seem ridiculous. They have them in New York now where you could just go somewhere and lay on a bed. They have them at airports, don't they? Don't they have them like at Google? Isn't that like an innovative thing? Like you, napping pods? You lo- you th- you'd you be comfortable? To me, that's like... Oh, st- not here. You guys are filthy. It'd be disgusting. Well, I think most of the... At an airport, I'm sure they'd be totally hygienic. Coming from you. Look under your desk. <laughs> what does that mean? I believe I saw a human arm down there I last think. week. There, there was. There was. Uh, Guillermo... What is your funniest thing from the sports weekend? Just another LeBron James mural, mural getting defaced in L.A. <laughs> why, why do they hate him? These kids, no, it's just these Kobe terrorists. Kobe. Yeah. No, it's the Kobe terrorists. They, no, it's the crazy Kobe people. This is another way that people around sports are not any kind of sane. Are they going to be mad if the Lakers oh. win a championship with LeBron? <laughs> I'm <you> serious. <laughs> with that roster? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to win one or two championships, and they're still going to be like, he was not Kobe, though. That's right. While not winning Kobe. them championships. No, they're all being Stugat. Uh, LeBron, win five of them. Right now. Right now, today. In July. Win five of them. Then we'll talk. If he wins with this roster, is it five? Will we count it as five? If he wins with this roster, it will be the single greatest achievement in the history of achievements. I'll count it as six. Uh, Roy, what is your funniest thing from the sports weekend? <laughs> Matt Harvey giving up eight earned runs on eight hits and zero walks on Sunday versus the Pirates. He gave up four homers. <laughs> that went south fast. That's a shame because he was actually picking up his velocity. It looked like it was a good move. Right. And it's back to fake acing. Still working on the movement, though. Uh, Mike, what was your funniest thing from the sports weekend? Uh, we have to pour one out. One of the great comebacks in all the sports. The rally has been killed. R.I.P. the Jimbo Fisher hair comeback. Oh, we, I saw him recently. It's all gone. Oh, no. All of it. Oh, well, he no. just all went totally it. bald? It, it, it is so thin. I don't know what happened over the course of a summer. I guess the SEC is really stressful on Jimbo because right, well, hold on he was a having such a great comeback. What you're telling me, is it still the cul-de-sac or what's happening? Like, what? Or did he just shave it all off? Uh, he's still, he's 
got some some aspects of the hair peninsula still going on but um, well it was a hair oh, island it was a hair a, island right. and it then became it became a hair peninsula, hair peninsula. peninsula yes. it's back to i mean the island's wasting away at this point okay but that what was happening correct me if i'm wrong on the head of jimbo fisher was he had simply a hair island in the center of his head and on on top of his skull it was a hair island and then it seemed to be connecting to other parts but then it's now all it's gone apart. now it's right. all gone i don't really know how someone comes back so quickly and then loses it all right so guys what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend uh i have um I have, you have <laughs> yes, i have golfer eddie pepperall i think we have sound for this eddie pepperall who at one point looked like he might win the open championship at five, uh, five under par admitting that he was hung over for his final round of the open i hit the ball better on the range which gave me some confidence because I didn't feel like I've been swinging it very good this week. So, And then playing with Phil, those two things gave me something to go out there with, honestly. And um, I was a little hungover, I won't lie. I had too much to drink last night. And, uh, you know, I was so frustrated with yesterday that today was really, I'm not going to say a write-off, but I, I didn't feel like I was in the golf tournament. And whether I shot 69 or 73 today, I, I wouldn't have, you know, it wouldn't have been heartbreaking. But um, as it happens, I've shot 67. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a um, funny game. Love that. Sometimes you play with a hangover, Dan, and you just don't think. There's no tension. You don't think. You just go out there and play, and he played and played well, and then he found himself in contention, and all he wanted to do was find one of those, you know, nap pods. Uh, my funniest thing from the sports weekend is that the Lakers signed Michael Beasley. <laughs> ow, ow. Yep, you guessed it. I'm a speed bump, so I've got one job. I slow you down. So imagine how I feel about Geico, who does way more. Like, not only could they save you money on car insurance, but they've been around for over 75 years, giving people fast and friendly claim service. Ow, ow. Plus, they got a nifty mobile app that gives you 24-7 access. Ow, ow. Just doing my job, buddy. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Lebertard. You are a very poor listener. Your job is to be a listener. It's your only job as far as I'm concerned. It's my only relationship with you. To listen. You are a listener. You are bad at it. Stugatz. Bad listener. Bad. This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Happy 50th birthday. 5 to Gary Payton, the glove. And happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. Beat me to it. I mean, saying the glove before you could say it. Yeah, GP. Uh, did you see what he did at? Uh, Just yelling at people. <laughs> I mean, he's got to go in the pantheon as one of the greatest trash talkers of all time. At fifty years old, he celebrated his fiftieth uh, birthday. By just eviscerating from the sidelines as a coach in the Big Three basketball in Miami, I think it was. I think that was in Miami. Who was he going after? Everyone. Anyone. But he went after one guy in particular where he just kept telling him the different kinds of week that he was. I'll find it. Mike, what's happening with you and Josh Gordon? You've been broken during the break. You're you're filled with fear. Mike Ryan is the rare Cleveland Browns fan. He is sitting in here today. This is uh, there, Sundays from now on. Sundays are going to have football in them. They're going to have football in them. And Mike Ryan came in today with a dog pound uh, hat, and he came in with a brown shirt. And, of course, the news that he gets is the news that he always gets whenever he's feeling like this which is Josh Gordon sending out a statement saying, look, I need to go take care of my mental health and my overall health. I haven't been excited for a football season in a while. Normally I talk myself into some irrational uh, Browns hope that's been taken away from me, but now the irrational hope is back. I got my expectations sky high. I'm expecting... You've been a- signing people. You got a quarterback who's not incompetent. You got the best quarterback the Browns have had in 20 years. Yeah, ages. I'm expecting a five-win season here, boys. This is big, big, big stakes on the line. <laughs> and now the Josh Gordon news comes along. And if you take it at its face value, I guess there really isn't cause for concern, even though 
the statement really was kind of ambiguous, and the general manager you want to read statement, the statement for the people who don't know what we're talking about. Josh Gordon, Cleveland Browns receiver, led the league in rushing on 14 games one time with Brandon Whedon as quarterback, but has had a series of drug problems that had derailed a lot of Brown season. While Mike is looking that up, the player that Gary Payton was eviscerating for the entire day was Dante Jones. <laughs> I do like that with the three-on-three, -three, where the coach could just talk trash to the player. He came out on the court and did it. What? Is it isn't Dante Jones the guy who told us that story about Coach K setting uh physically setting fire to the locker room by accident? <laughs> we'll see if we can find that story in a second. The statement from Josh Gordon reads as follows: I'm reaching out to you all personally and letting you know that I am not only doing great physically but mentally as well. So far, so good, right, guys? You will notice that I will not be in Cleveland for the start of training camp. What? Why? Why? Rest assured. <laughs> I mean, Stugatz was saying this during the break. Rest assured, coming from Josh Gordon's mouth, Stugatz was saying, if Josh Gordon tells me to rest assured, I'm going to stay up all night. Yep, restless. I mean, there is no rest, especially, I mean, that guy. It's certainly more so not than assured. Sports. It's not assured, for sure. <laughs> rest assured, this, too, is part of my overall health and treatment plan. I appreciate the awesome support I've received from teammates, friends, fans, and the Browns organization. Just like you, I'm excited for the start of the season. I have every intention of being ready and available to join my teammates soon to help bring winning football to our fans with the help of the nfl the nflpa and browns organization i've been able to utilize the resources available to me that will ensure my well-being on and off the field by continuing to follow the plan set up by our medical director and his team and taking time before the season starts now john dorsey put out a statement that didn't uh mention this uh plan from the medical director that they put him forth it would have been uh it would have helped me rest assured right. if uh, well he you're always that. worried that something else is coming after this I, that somebody's what, working on a story that there's going to be a failed drug test there's going to be another shoe that's going to drop that's what my history has been with josh gordon and i'm constantly now searching yes, on that, twitter that, josh gordon that, suspension that statement by itself <laughs> It, it does the opposite of helping Browns fans rest assured. Just the moment that Josh Gordon says rest assured, Browns fans are like, what happened? They got post-traumatic stress disorder. What does this mean? What's coming next? Yeah, you're biting your nails. You're pacing back and forth. I mean, there is no rest. You're up all night. I, I don't think, you know, those two words, rest assured, Coming out of that mouth, I don't think you can take it seriously. More so than anyone else in sports, Those that's the guy you least want to tell you. Hey, rest assured, yeah, I'm fine. You, you can assure that I'm not getting any rest now. And the statement from John Dorsey, the general manager of the Cleveland Browns, says we will continue to support Josh as he receives the care needed to maintain his progress. We are going to respect his privacy while he is away from the team. Josh will be placed on the non-football illness reserve list until he's ready to return. I could have used more there. I got to be honest. I could have used a lot more there from yeah. John Dorsey to help explain well, what this is. Well, no, but he is telling you. He is telling you. I feel like the Browns at quarterback and at wide receiver, have been and have gotten good at dealing with addicts. Like, they had a Johnny Manziel problem. Johnny Manziel told you that he was using in a way he shouldn't have. Josh Gordon, the league has told you again and again that he cannot control himself around drugs. The Browns, now, I you can't jump to this conclusion because you don't know it, but if you're going to jump to the conclusion, this is exactly the guy you would do it with. It's the guy that would be first on the list almost throughout sports. Did he did he again sabotage another Brown season because they're sitting there trying to take care of an addict in their huddle? Right. People might say that's unfair what we're doing, but no. I mean, Josh Gordon, we love well, him. I want him to history. succeed, but he's earned it's that. Just, it, yeah, it's just the history. And usually something else does come next when this kind of stuff happens. Next here is Scott Van Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Don Lebatard. You guys don't think that I would lose a fight against Gene Hackman, but you do think I'd lose one to Clint Eastwood. Oh, he would crush you. I think you'd lose to Hackman, too. i got to be honest with you. Stugatz. That doesn't mean I can't fight. Now, my, my fighting game has been, I, I haven't used it in about 19 years. I mean, have you ever seen Every Which Way But Loose? Man, he would kick your tail. <laughs> I mean, if he brought the orangutan. He would just throw a handful of gluten in your eye and you'd be like, ah! <laughs> That's cheating.
<laughs> you didn't throw things at me. Oh, Gene Hackman doesn't play fair. No, he does not. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. Guys, what do you mean I can't win a fight? You do not want to cross Gene Hackman. You do right Certainly now. Not. Look at his oh, face, man. Him. It's such an angry face. Seriously, he would take you out to the woodshed. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right. Uh, Scott Van Pelt has been at this for a while. We'll get to golf with him in a second. But let's get to Gary Payton trash talking. This is courtesy of FS1. Uh, and I want to get from uh, from Scott Van Pelt his list of top trash talkers in his time at ESPN. Let's go ahead and play the sound of Gary Payton uh, lighting up Dante Jones. You're going to be my cheerleader. That's what you're going to be. My cheerleader. <laughs> Boy, you ain't talking about nothing. You a little, you, you ain't nothing. Boy, y'all you do is run around and be a uh, sucker with everybody else. Sucker. You a sucker. Gary Payton. Mike. Just to clarify, Gary Payton's not playing. No, he is the head coach. He's the head coach. He turned 50 today. Happy 50th birthday (laughs) to Gary Payton. Uh, Scott Van Pelt joins us now. Thank you for doing so, Scott. What's the list look like? Trash talkers of your time. Uh,. Carl Ravitch has made people weep. I've seen it. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't think that. Really? Uh, no, not really. But he's <laughs> actually uh, the, the truth. Is, Ravitch is actually one of the one of the most funny, subtle under the under his breath guy. He he would, but see, he would he would do it in a way that the person sitting next to him would know is funny, but never, you know, outwardly so. Uh, I, I, Vinny in the cafeteria will break you down. Wait a minute. Um, Wait, no, Vin no, 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 no. I, under- answer, I understand how he's answering this question. I was asking you about athletes, not people at ESPN. No, but you said game. it. You play this game. Yeah, this game's better. Scott chose a better game, but you presented the question in a way that suggested you wanted trash talkers at ESPN. My bad. That's My what bad. I thought. Okay. That's what I thought. You All right, said. Well, let's play it your way then. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, I mean, because there aren't there aren't any. I'm, I'm just being I'm just being uh, being silly. Uh, I, I think. I, Larry Bird, the story of him walking in at the three-point shooting contest and asking who, who, which one of y'all wants to finish second and not taking off his warm-up and then <laughs> shooting the final money ball and putting up that crooked finger and walking off as it went in. I mean, he was legendary, and they said that he'd tell people, you know, he'd just tell the guy on the floor that, you know, someone had to be put in who could guard him because he would just be giving them a dose for a game. I mean, I think Bird was an underrated uh, crap talker. Um, uh, and obviously Jordan would, you know, would, would, he was ruthless about it. I mean, he was still, he was still talking junk in his Hall of Fame induction ceremony. <laughs> he was cruel. Michael was cruel That's about I mean. competition because he was allowed to be because it was always rewarded. Exactly. And I mean, but I mean, it actually, it actually got sad. Re- the, the, the Woj article on Jordan getting into the Hall of Fame is one of the all timers because it was just like everyone's looking around going, People just want to hug you and, and anoint you as what you are, as the greatest of all time, and you're still pissed off about high school. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you carrying this bitter, bitterness around? You've won at life. <laughs> exactly. You, or you'd think. You, I don't know how you could win it to a higher degree than he won, and he was still angry that night, which actually I think in a lot of ways was kind of sad. I mean, if, if, if you're not happy that night, what, what day is ever going to make you happy? <laughs> Scott, I'm, uh, I'm conflicted. I think a lot of people are conflicted with how they felt yesterday. Uh, Tiger was back. He was in contention, a final round at a major, had the lead on the 11th tee box. But I think most people, myself included, like, hey, old Tiger, man, he, you know, puts his foot on the gas and he finishes that thing off. Uh, we didn't see that yesterday. I thought he got a little bit conservative, but it was nice to see him back. So where are you? Because it was nice to have Tiger back in the fold, but I wanted to see that guy go out there and finish it once he had the lead on the 11th hole. I think all that's true, Stu guys. All, everything you said, it, it was th- that moment that he led and the realization that, oh my God, he's on the back nine on a Sunday in a major and he's leading again. Was, was exhilarating. And I don't care who you are. I mean, I was just, I'm rooting for the story. And then to be totally honest, I'm also rooting for a guy I've known for a long time who, who was once Superman and now is a 42 year old with a bald spot and a fused back. You know, we, we now, he's, he's somehow done the impossible and he's become the guy who's relatable, who's been through, you know, a mess of his own creation. He's been through a divorce. He's got a bad back. He's got a bald spot. He's got all these other things. But you just want to see him be Superman again. And to your point, he wasn't. You know, he had that bad couple-hole stretch where he had the lead, and then he lost it. 
But I think in the grand scheme, if you're able to just be reasonable for a second, I know that's hard for us to do, but if we're, if we're being reasonable for a second, just the fact that he was there, that he was in that space yesterday is mind-boggling considering how far removed he was from that even being a consideration a year ago, six months ago. Right. So I think it can be all these things where it was awesome to see, it made us so excited, it made us get nostalgic, and it also made us get realistic that, all right, he's still not all the way back. And and the larger point is that there's so many really good people that you're going to have that he's going to have to beat, none of whom are carrying around the emotional baggage of having been bludgeoned by the guy the way his contemporaries were from 15, 20 years ago. That's interesting. Scott Van Pelt with us on ESPN Radio. We were talking before you came on about the idea of someone challenging LeBron James in sports for fame. If Tiger makes the run from popular to human to more popular, popular, unpopular, more popular, the way LeBron did, what's this look like if Tiger, in his 40s, with a bald spot, human, with people rooting for the story, if he wins some majors and then starts chasing Jack? I mean, I think you've already seen it. I, I think, I think, just yesterday, just a taste of it yesterday. People, I mean, and, and I, if, if you guys think I'm overstating it, please correct me. But my, my sense was that there was this immense appetite for for the story. And if he could have gotten there, and granted, I mean, look, nine holes in a major is really actually a pretty long way. As we saw, a lot can happen. But if if he if he wins again, and I believe he will, I believe he'll win a tour event. Winning a major, I mean, it requires a lot of things to go your way. Um, but I think just one. I don't even think he needs to catch Jack. I think I think just the one, just one, it, just one well, puts him right there with LeBron. I think so because because keep in mind, keep it what he did. He's still the guy with fourteen, isn't he, Dan? Right? He's still the guy that was that guy who became a singular global sensation and if he wins just the one i mean and maybe if it's the right one if it were the masters right if he wins there again where the, i think that's the one where even the most casual fans watch because you know the british open you get a you get the time difference and maybe not everyone's not as not as invested i don't know maybe i'm wrong but i, I think just the one finishes off the most unlikely part of this story the redemptive underdog arc that never could have been predicted like if lebron somehow became this guy with like a bad knee and and, and he was like had to shoot like left-handed hook shots like metal arc lemon or something <laughs> you, you could you could never pre- presume that could be part of the story because he's this superhuman figure well that's tiger he was that so the fact that he's become this now just the just for it to happen one more time in a major championship arena would answer all those that wrote his obituary and have written it for the past decade he's done he's done he's done he's done well, all right, he didn't win yesterday, but yesterday shows that, you know what, if you, if you were throwing shovels of dirt on his grave, well, he's out of the grave now. He's not dead. He's not done. He's a, he's a competitor in the arena. So one more time, I think, is enough to just, to, even if, the, if that's the end of the story, it still makes it the most amazing chapter in the whole story. That's such a great chance yesterday, Scott, because you know him so well and obviously know the game so well. I'm wondering, if you ask Tiger, hey, you could take any shot back on the back nine, which one do you think he takes back? Is it that flop shot attempt on, I think it was 12 I, maybe? I think that was 11. I, I think so because he, he tried to get, I don't want to use the word cute, but I think it was, I think it was more the risk, the reward didn't. Um, didn't equal the risk necessarily. I mean, he knew the lie. He, he had to lie in front of him. I didn't know it. Uh, I didn't see it. Obviously, I'm not standing there. But it's, it seemed like if he just throws it beyond the, the, the pin and, and takes his putt and takes his medicine, you only drop the one shot. Losing two, you work so hard to get each one. And then the finish at Carnoustie is so penalizing. I, I think that's probably the one. But you know, just you know, iron off the tee works there because the ball was rolling so much. But it's it still, to me, Stu Gatz, you you knew from the club selection that he doesn't necessarily trust the driver off the tee in as, as much as he might need to. And this was a week where you didn't have to hit driver because the ball rolled forever over there. But the one shot on eleven, I think that 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 flop is probably the one that was the most penalizing. But look, man, he played side by side with a guy who didn't make a bogey for thirty six holes at Carnoustie for the weekend, which is almost impossible to to comprehend. So, 
you know, he was playing with a guy who was just not going to make the mistake, which for so long was what Tiger did. He just sort of waited for everybody else to screw up. Speaking of that guy, poor Molinari. Yeah. We had a 12-minute conversation. We didn't mention him once, and you only called him that guy. Yeah. <laughs> My guy, Frankie Red Sauce. He, he's, I mean, he's a hell of a player, and he's been as hot as anybody in the world the last month. So, I mean, it's just... But that, that speaks to what Tiger is. I mean, he's still the, the son that blocks out everything else around him. And he played, uh, Molinari played brilliant golf. He deserved to be the champion golfer. Does anyone else call him Frankie Red Sauce? Is that actually a thing? No, I don't think so. I think I just said it out loud. <laughs> it's, right. it's, well it's my, like it's, it. my quarter, it's my quarter Italian in me. I don't know. I, 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 don't, like know. It. I'm not, I don't mean it just. I'd I don't like mean to get that off the ground. No, I'd like to get it off the ground. I'd like to find <laughs> out if he if he if he'd like to be Frankie Red Sauce. I like make that. It as, yeah. Yeah. Make it a poll. Yeah, make it a poll. Put it up I, there. Can Guillermo. I steal it from you? And... <laughs> yeah, you can steal it. Thank you, Scott. Always good catching up with you. Congratulations, all right, boys. Be good on all the success of the Sports Center show. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Raindrop, drop top. Time to read the script for a hot spot. That's a good spot, by the way, Stugatz. Uh, the Sports Center, it's a good place to see a show find its voice. Yes. Sports Center at midnight. Yeah, because that, that show over the year, uh, two years, I guess now, has really grown in terms of, uh, and he's always been great at television. But well, just, you get that West Coast audience combined with mm-hmm. the younger East Coast college kids who are still up watching sports. Well, it's one of them. the few things anywhere in media that is growing. And viewership because those things are hard to come by now that we're more fractured than we've ever been. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying a home for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress for a lot of people. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, your assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. That gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new, exclusive rate shield approval. This is very cool here. First, they'll lock your rate up for 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rates stay the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. Either way, you win. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender to get started. Simple. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. Rate shield approval. Only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. That's ridiculous. Idiot. I know it was a terrible Barkley impersonation. Never heard it before. It was just... It's Sui nominee. Stugatz. Really bad. You guys want to try all your Barkleys? Oh, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's better. Anyone else want to get in on the bidding? Ernie, Dan Lebatard is an idiot. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Ernie, Ernie. I don't want to go after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah kitty. <laughs> kitty. <laughs> Let's say uh, kitty. That Dan Lebatard is an idiot. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. You're welcome, Dan. <laughs> Tell your fat daddy I hate him. Oh! 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 Fat Chris oh! making an appearance. Oh! Oh! Fat Chris once again a surprise. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Give us the rat-a-tat version of Stat of the Day, the quick one, the one that lets us get to the information the fastest. Stat of the Day is here, and it's in your face. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. From CBS Sports on Twitter at CBS Sports. If Carmelo Anthony signs with the Rockets at Sportsline's projections decrease Houston's championship chances from 4.8% to 3.9%. That's funny. (laughs) So Carmelo, the big Carmelo signing (laughs) decreases their chances of winning the championship. Um, One of the things that's funny about that entire situation is 
the Houston Rockets were as good as they were last year because they were top five defensively. And you lose Trevor Ariza and Mbamute, and you replace them with Carmelo Anthony on defense. That is something that's going to hurt you. Yeah. Now, he can be better than Trevor Ariza 0 for 12 or whatever he was in game seven. But uh, the Rockets were really good at defense last year, and it, it, they didn't just win because of because of James Harden and Chris Paul. They were playing very strongly on the other side of the ball, even though they were had they had like this incredible. Wasn't it wasn't a historic offensive rating. It was a, a historic offensive rating. I believe that it was. Yes, and your point about defense is well taken. You're right; they were a good defensive team, but today they are about they are on the verge of making their team worse. Well, I don't know. Daryl Morey is always, give me names, give me talent. I'll go get those guys. I'll figure out a way to make it work. And Clint Capella still hasn't re-signed. Yeah. And and now Carmelo is reuniting with a coach. Again, Mike D'Antoni told Sports Illustrated that he quit because of Carmelo Anthony in New York. He didn't He didn't get fired. He left the millions on the table to get away from Melo. <laughs> That's a thing that happened. Yes. We're not making that up. Yeah. So I wonder what D'Antoni's thinking. Oh, what? he has to be behind this, right? Because there, Mello was, he was the dominant guy. He was the dominant presence. He was the star of that team. I mean, here it's already an established team with D'Antoni could say, hey, it's a game away from beating the Rockets, man. Just you, come here and you, fit you in. Think, <laughs> oh, you think Mello's a, a here for a role and not to be a star. That's fine. I, I would That's hope so. That, really, really? I would <laughs> hope so. <laughs> If not, they made a very, very, very <laughs> really? bad decision. Really? You think and Sportsline should relook at everything. Okay? Right. You think that Mello... I would decrease the zero percent chance. Why, did you just fall into sort of cliched sports radio talk of fitting for a role? Did you forget who you were talking about? Well, no, I didn't forget who I was talking about. I just, I have to think that's the case. Mello could have came to Miami. He could have been the guy here. He could have scored thirty a game. So God, here. he told. You're, we're not but a month removed from Carmelo Anthony saying, I'm not a bench player, I'm not coming off the bench, and you saying that he was closer to being someone who should be on all fours there used as the bench yep. by the guys who are on the Thunder. <laughs> you thought you thought that Steven Adams, when he needed a break, should have gone over and sat on Melo's bridged back. Yes, he should have been the bench, yes, that, that subs were sitting on, yes. Okay, so that's your viewpoint on Mello, and then there's Mello's viewpoint on Mello. You think those are the same. That's funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> why, why, why wouldn't, why wouldn't Mello, why wouldn't Mello be self-aware about who he is at this point in his career? Because all his life he's been Mello! But he can't possibly go there thinking he's gonna be the number one option. Either, listen, one, I'm not saying you're wrong. One of two things happen. Either he is going there thinking he's the number one option, or the Rockets just lied to get him into camp. Like, like that's it. I don't know Those which are one my it only is. two choices. Mike, uh, go. Uh, ahead. What else is there? Go ahead and give me what Adam Schefter is reporting on uh, on Josh Gordon. Please, is this good news for Mike Ryan, the the Browns fan, or bad news? Dan, I am resting assured because Adam Schefter, the best information guy in the business, tweeted out Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon did not have any slip ups or failed tests per sources. Weren't you supposed to do it as Schefter? According to my sources. <laughs> Browns wide receiver. I can't do that the entire time. Couldn't wish wishes. Browns wide yes, receiver Josh Gordon. Yes, you can. Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon. It, uh, it loses. It, it's diluted. That's I'm okay. just very good Keep at that. Trying. According to my sources. Let's, let's just, just. His leave is a proactive defensive gesture. I see. I can't do it. I'm losing. According to my sources, his leave is a proactive defensive gesture to get extra counseling to try to ensure that he does not have any setbacks. Uh, any of the setbacks that have marked his past. Those who know him say that he has worked his bleep off. We back, kid. So Josh Gordon tells you, <laughs> it's, listen, nothing to worry about here, and you don't really believe I'll it. rest assured when Schefter tells me to uh, rest assured, and he boy. basically told me to be rest assured. Okay. Five wins, here we come! Yeah. Shark Week, next. Don Libertard. Yo! Chicken time! Stugats! Smarter guy! This is the Don Libertard Show, with the Stugats, on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Jason Romero, going to join us in just a second here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Joe. Joe well, Romero. What did I call him, Jason? You call him Jason. Oh, sorry you about that. You seek clarification on what his last name was, we, we fix that. j Rope. Sorry about that, Joe. Anyway, he's part of Shark Week and Gronk Week, and we're going to talk to him in just a second. Here's your Sports Center update. He's a cinematographer. Do you not want to say that word? 
He was just scared. He's right now leaking confidence. He's just leaking. Tiger Woods, sixth play finish in the Open Championship, has moved him up to 50th in the world for the first time since January of 2015 and qualified him for the WGC Bridgestone Invitational just two weeks from now. Justin Turner left Sunday's Dodgers game with a groin injury and may be placed on the 10-day DL. And finally, a baby that was unexpectedly delivered inside a San Antonio <laughs> Chick-fil-A will be given free Chick-fil-A. You should call a timeout. <laughs> you know what? I'm out of here. Blink motion activated video cameras. Send an alert to your smartphone when they detect suspicious activity. And now is the time to buy. Get three Blink cameras for way less than the other guys. And an extra 15% off at BlinkProtect.com slash Dan15. BlinkProtect.com slash Dan15. Do it today. I get the sponsors right, though. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Uh, yeah. That was terrible. Two minutes. I wanted to talk to the cinematography. Uh, Joe Romero is his name. Monster Tag featuring Gronk. It airs tonight, 8 p.m. on Discovery. J-Ro. Get out of here. Ah! As part of Shark Week, celebrating its 30th anniversary, he is the underwater cinematographer on this, and he's all around the Gronk stuff. And so we welcome him in. I'm sorry my partner called you Jason. Uh, Joe Romero yeah. with us on ESPN Radio. Uh, you can start wherever you want with the Gronk stories. Did you know anything about the Gronk before he arrived in your life? Uh, yeah, I'm from Rhode Island, so I'm a, I'm a Patriots fan along with everybody else, but I mean... <clears throat> around my area, the, you know, Gronk's a legend. So it's like, you know, you sit there and Shark Week approached me, and they're like, we're going to do the show with Gronk, and you're going to bring him in the water with tiger sharks, and it's going to be, you know, like he's not really familiar with the ocean and a lot of stuff, and all I can think about is, like, something happens to this guy, I'm never going to be able to go home again. So well, like, when, when you say he's not familiar with the ocean, do you mean not familiar with being in the ocean or not familiar that we have oceans? <laughs> Well, I think he's more focused on all the things that he's doing with football. That I mean, he's definitely familiar with the ocean and stuff, but he's he's not familiar with sharks. He's not like he he was one of the guys that we had that was most outside his element. I felt. Well, tell us more, please. Tell us more without spoiling. And again, Monster Tag featuring Gronk airs tonight, 8 p.m. Discovery as part of Shark Week, celebrating its 30th anniversary. The guy we had on last week, the Navy SEAL shark attack survivor, he told us that he didn't know the Gronk. He didn't know anything about the Gronk. So he was saying from what the, maybe the stories you were telling or someone else was telling, he was imagining a bit of a Sesame Street character. <laughs> well, he's kind of like that big, huge... You see the guy like coming from a boat like a mile away. You can tell who he is. You know, he's like bigger than everybody else. And I, I'm like six foot three, and I stand next to the guy, and I have to look up at him. I mean, the guy's huge, and when he swims, just his swim of his hands could like knock you out. Like he's just a big guy. <laughs> I, I gave him actually like I mean, these these full face masks that we talked through underwater, and uh, I gave him mine. I like gave him my personal one because I was like, I know this one r- works really well. And then we gave him all the briefings about, like, don't touch the sharks, all that stuff. And then the next thing you know, there's, like, a huge tiger shark sniffing his face. Joe, Joe, how confused, how confused was he when he realized he could talk underwater? He was, he actually handled himself really well from what it was. But there you could tell there was some stuff that was really outside of his element. He was putting himself right in there, though, like, testament to the man. He, like, that's a lot on someone right at once. You know, you're just like, you know. He can swim and stuff, but he's never dived. He's never he's never done anything like that. He's never interacted with sharks, and then we're putting him up to like what we took, you know, years and years to get to. The guy sure <laughs> definitely came to the came to the you know the battlefield well, but at the same time, yeah, you know, Joe, he, did he try to put his finger around. in any mouths of sharks? Did he try to put his hand in it? Like, give us some <laughs> of the stories. What was Gronk doing that was Gronkian? Uh. Well, there was a time that we told, I mean, he listens to instructions so well. I think that's a testament to his coaching. He's just really good at, like, you know, listening to the people around him to do it. But we told him, don't touch the shark. And then there was this moment where this huge tiger shark comes up and just sniffs Gronk's face, like full-on pressing its face against his. And he's just looking at us like, eyes huge, and he's not touching it. He's not touching it. He's following instructions. We got, like, you know, every safety diver is jumping off the bottom of the ocean, like, coming at him, like, you know, like, it looks like a nuclear strike with just all these missiles, like, heading towards him to go and, like, push the shark away from him. But 
testament to the man he listened to instructions and let that tiger shark sniff his face. Can you tell me a little so, more about these safety divers? Because the making of Shark, shark Week is a bit of a fascination to me. Tell me how, how often those those safety divers are needed. Oh, there's safety divers all within our stuff. It's a, I mean, the sharks themselves, we can predict a lot of what they're going to do. It's just really what the people are going to do and how they're going to react to stuff. Like I said, I was like, he followed instructions, didn't push it off. But if we explained to him to do that, he would have done it. It's just you never really predict all the human factors, all the other things. So we have safety divers around mostly for us because you're underwater. You're using life support. You have, like, huge camera equipment that really gives a lot of movie crews problems just being on shore versus being in a box underwater and then on top of it you throw wild animals which are the most unpredictable thing to work with in film so i mean we have some tough stuff like every so often when i shoot something on shore or something it's just it feels way easier because of like all the stuff we have to deal with underwater but it's difficult it's it's a definitely a task loading job you know what what are you excited about showing people tonight and and the rest of the week shark week celebrating its 30th anniversary monster tag featuring gronk airing tonight 8 p.m on discovery what is it from the the work that you did on this one that you're like you want people to see it uh i think it's all star studded throughout the entire thing i think that's like the thing is we took a lot of people that were outside their element i mean you guys are used to seeing shark week of that formula of uh, you know, you have the shark, the boat, scientists and cameramen. But, you know, throwing someone else in there that never really, like, basically the viewer, people that everybody looks at and admires. We took Rhonda, we took Rock, we took Aaron. We took, like, all these people out in the water to, like, experience these sharks and seeing how they react and doing everything. It's totally different. I just think it makes it more epic. And this year they pulled out all the stops. It's like I can see it in everybody. Everybody's like super excited, excited, but also super exhausted, you know. So it's the biggest Shark Week ever, and like summertime, it's not summertime without it. What would you tell us? I thought you were going to go there, Stu. God, did you forget that you were doing the radio show, or what happened? weren't you going to ask something? No, yeah, no. no I was no, in the no. penalty box. I have no idea. The question I wrote down. I don't know if you've asked the question already. I was waiting for your approval. You didn't really give me any of that approval. I'm because was he talking about Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Oh, he was Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Yeah. Yes. You got to be careful. Like Rodgers had this whole visit with the Dalai Lama, and I'm telling you, since then he's been doing crazy things like swimming in sharks. And you guys got to be more responsible. That's the greatest quarterback we have in today's game. I don't want him oh, swimming with sharks until he's done playing football. Oh, I know. I saw him with the Sharks, and I'm sitting there right in front of him. And I know that those arms are priceless, so trust me. We were very, not, very Not both of them. But... Not both of them. Just one of them. Just one of them is priceless. Smart, the other one's though. super cheap. <laughs> yeah, he's very, very smart and, like, very, very on it. Like, Aaron's one of the – he was a super pleasure to work with. One, a real guy, like, a real, like, you know, just – he didn't feel himself to be like this special thing, but everybody just knew he was. Are, are you just, stunned that Aaron Rodgers and Rob Gronkowski are two human beings who play the same sport? Uh, they're definitely two different people. <laughs> two different people in all aspects and personalities and everything. They're two different people, but they seem to have a love for the same passions. I think that Aaron was, uh, Aaron definitely was a, uh, he was awesome to work with. Yeah, I had fun time with both of them, but I loved I loved working with Aaron. Again, Monster Tag featuring Gronk airs tonight, 8 p.m. Discovery. It's Shark Week, and it's celebrating its 30th anniversary. I just want numbers to the two questions I'm about to ask you, and thank you for your time, Joe. I'm, I, I just want sure. to know how many hours you spent with Gronk. Oh, uh, like three days pretty much fully with Gronk, yeah. Quite a bit of time. Okay. How many 69 jokes did he tell? <laughs> I didn't hear one. Oh, that's, I don't believe you. That's a record. I don't believe you. You're a crock. You're a croc. Oh, you didn't spend any time with Gronk. What are you is kidding he me? He can't, he can't go three days without around. making a 69 joke. He can't do it. Nice. I mean, when he's getting his face sniffed by a tiger shark, I don't think that's the first thing on his mind. Yes, it is. But it's always on his yes, mind. It's, it's, on his mind. it's <laughs> why he... Yeah. Did he start shaking at any point over the three days? Shaking? Yeah, oh, withdrawals. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Joe, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate it, sir. All right. No problem. Happy right. Shark Week, guys. Thanks, Jason. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I should have done this years ago. 
Disclaimer, traveling back in time is physically impossible unless you know how to build a functioning time machine. Then by all means, travel 25 years back in time, switch your car insurance to GEICO. You could save a bunch of money. While you're there, please prevent your younger self from wearing that sleeveless tuxedo t-shirt, parachute pants, and glitter high tops to your senior prom. And at long last, rectify this horrible crime against nature. GEICO is absolved of all liability if you destroy the fabric of time and space. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. Good work today. That was a fun show. Stugats. It was also intergalactically stupid. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. The Dan Lebatard Show is brought to you by Specs. Come by your local Specs to listen exclusively to Iggy Azalea's newest album, Survive the Summer, before you can buy it August 3rd. Plus, sign up for Specs' exclusive throwback club, which gives you a cassette version of every album you purchase in store. Specs Music, we haven't existed since 2013. <laughs> so great. You had no idea none, what you were reading until none, the last sentence, none, did you? None, <laughs> you none. The, the only thing you absorbed, let's do this again. The I only, was thinking Specs, I was reading the, it. I don't want to say anything. I was fearful of saying all right, anything. Let's recap. For those of you who don't know, Stugatz will read anything put in front of him without retaining anything <laughs> that is put in front of him. So every once in a while, from now on, we're just going to be putting fake reads in front of him. That was a good one, guys. In order to trick him. Read it again just so that you can hear again what it is that you just read. <laughs> the Dan Levitard Show is brought to you by Specs. Come by your local Specs to listen exclusively to Iggy Azalea's newest album, Survive the Summer, before you can buy it August 3rd. Plus, sign up for Specs' exclusive throwback club, which <laughs> gives you a cassette version of every album you purchase in store. Specs music. We haven't existed <laughs> since 2013. I think the uh, word that you should have really picked up on was cassettes. Yes, the cassettes <laughs> would be a little bit outdated. I was going to say specs. <laughs> yeah, well, specs too. That's right. It should actually be specs before cassette. Here's the bad part. I think I went into Roy's headsets before we came back on air and said, Roy, I got specs here, right? I mean, that's right. That's and on. But that was after you ended the last segment by making withdrawal a, a URL. You made it a withdraw Whatever. URL. The L's a tricky one for you. I I've, I struggle with L's. Man. The L's, yeah. they Rory. get away. What's his name? Rory. What's his face? Rory. Rory McElroy. McElroy. There it is. McElroy. There it is. But yeah. L's are tough, man. Yeah. La last segment, he also had Gronk swimming in sharks. Did I? Um, let's go ahead and update the polls at Lebitard Show on the polls. What do we have today? Should you be alarmed if your gum tastes and feels like teeth? That happened to me yesterday. 94% of the audience said yes. Are you surprised that Stugatz has a rotten mouth? 94% of the audience said no. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> a great last 30 minutes. <laughs> Did Camarillo save the Dolphins? <laughs> Unbelievable. Greg, mean, Greg Camarillo was a receiver for the Dolphins in what was obviously a 1-15 season because look at it. 57% <laughs> of the audience said no. The hell are the Lakers doing? 69% of the audience said yes. Nice. Nice. There you go. Can Max Scherzer kill you with his eyes? 80% of the audience said yes. Does anything other than urine get described as trickling down? 58% of the audience said yes. How about that? Is he good? What was that about? Joe oh, Flacco. Joe Flacco. Flacco. Is he good? Oh, yeah. 54% of the audience said no. <laughs> Told you. There's still a couple of guys, you know, they're sitting out on the porch in Baltimore like, hey, Joe could still do it. And those guys will always be there, man. <laughs> Sipping iced tea, a little lemonade. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? You're telling me, you're, we were talking about Lamar Jackson and Joe Flacco, and you're telling me there will always be two men on a porch somewhere in Baltimore sipping lemonade or Arnold Palmer's, and they will be saying, Joe can still do it this year. I believe in Joe. They'll always be there. Yeah, Joe can sling it. Joe can get back to being the Super Bowl MVP. Those two guys, and it's only two guys, but they'll always be there on the porch sipping some Gatorade <laughs> and some iced tea and some lemonade, and they'll be, you know, talking about the good old days with Joe. 
Joe says he won't have to answer questions about Lamar Jackson because he'll be winning. <laughs> That's oh. right. Oh, Joe. <laughs> oh, Joe. <laughs> Adorable, Joe. <laughs> I, I just don't know. If you're the Baltimore Ravens and that's what you have at quarterback, I don't know how you're not in your front office just openly hoping for Lamar Jackson to steal his job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm it, thinking they probably are. Because it's not – how old is Joe Flacco at, at this point? And, and you've seen how Ben Roethlisberger here late in life always looks the way he runs like a skyscraper, you know, with legs. He's 33. It feels like Joe Flacco is older than that, does it not? Absolutely. Does it yes. not? And is it just because he's slow footed? Like, is it? Is it because he's gangly? Like, it seems like Joe Flacco is is well past his prime, and thirty three is no longer well past your prime for the quarterback. Like when he's running, even walking, it looks so painful when he picks his foot up off the ground. Now, well, we've said before, a baby giraffe, like just right fresh out of the womb. Like it's not it's a, it's a baby giraffe still covered in embryonic fluid. It's just learning how to how to waddle. <laughs> well, there are two guys on the porch. You think that baby giraffe? Can yes, still get it's going to get them to the title game. <laughs> <laughs> that baby giraffe can still sling them, sling those dots. If possession is nine tenths of the law, do you know what the other one tenth is? Eighty eight percent of the audience has no idea. No, nope, no idea. Should Francesco Molinari's nickname be Frankie Red Sauce? I love that. <laughs> 83% of the audience said yes. Those are the polls. I'm watching a highlight now of a 40-yard touchdown run Joe Flacco had his rookie year. <laughs> Where can I see it? I need to see it. I remember like it was yesterday, even though it was about 40 years ago. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't believe what you just said. You, yeah, I don't believe what it's you just said. It's the first thing I think of. You are a liar. You're a dirty liar. Joe Flacco never ran 40 yards for a touchdown. Liar! 